This episode is brought to you by HP. Whenever you do your best thinking, the HP Spectre X360 is ready when inspiration strikes. With power save for battery life and focus mode to multitask, you can do your best thinking whenever and wherever it happens. The HP Spectre X360 2-in-1 convertible PC with Windows 10 saves battery life for whenever an idea hits you. HP Spectre X360, a more thoughtful laptop. I'm Kim Grinnells of Dogman.com, University of Washington, opening game of the season at Husky Stadium, five o'clock kickoff, and uh, expecting, uh, it's going to be interesting, weather is supposed to be in the low 70s to mid 70s, no chance of rain earlier this week, we saw a little bit of a chance of rain, but hopefully the weather turns out and is going to be a pleasant, pleasant day at Husky Stadium, and we have with us Frank Gogola with the Missoulian and 406MT.com, Frank you're coming out. You're coming all the way from Montana and you're going to drive. Yeah, it's going to be a long one. I think about seven and a half hours, but it's exciting to have, have football back. So looking well, forward you, to be there Saturday for the first time. Ever. Well, if you take the proper route, you can go down through Walla Walla, wine country, taste a little bit of wine, enjoy yourself. It's always an option. <laughs> fun detour. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Frank, Bobby Houck's a uh, former uh, coach at University of Washington. He was a uh, defensive backs coach here back when Rick Neuheisel was the coach a long, long time ago. He left for UNLV. He is back. How's the Bobby Houck second, uh, second stint running at uh, Montana so far? Well, they've been on an a upward tra- trajectory um, since he came back. They started out six and five in 2018, his first year, um, but he had a big rebuilding project to do and you know they jumped from that to 10 and 4 in 2019 and made it all the way to the fcs quarterfinals and had a you know real solid shot to to make it to the semifinals but lost a you know low scoring 17 10 playoff Mm -hmm. game in in the snow um and then last year they, they didn't play in the fall um the FCS moved to the spring and the Grizz opted out of playing in the spring and decided to play two non-conference games and they uh, beat their division two central Washington and a big sky team, Portland state um, by a combined score. It's like one Oh nine to 10, something extremely lopsided. So that sort of set the tone for big expectations this year. And, and um, Bobby Houck's not, he, he hasn't been afraid to say he thinks they're, a uh, legitimate national title contender this year. You know, leaving for UNLV and then coming back later, uh, was there some bitterness with him coming back or has he been embraced by the fan base? I think the fan, I think the fan base uh, loves him a lot. So okay. it seems like he's, he's been embraced a lot. I, I think they know he, he didn't, I don't think he left on bad terms when he left in 2009 at all. He led them. They won the the Big Sky Conference title all seven seasons. He was at Montana from 2003 to 2009, um, led them to three national runner-up finishes in the FCS playoffs. So I think that's a big goal of his coming back is to to actually break through and and try to win that national title he's been so close to, to getting before. Sitting at the 50 yard line with a beer in one hand, a hot dog in the other. Tell me what this offense is going to look like to those sitting in the stands. <laughs> um, it's, it'll be uh, interesting to see. They, they could have some challenges moving the ball, especially against such a great uh, defense on paper from what I've uh, heard about Washington and, and their defense. So Montana, they, and they do have a new quarterback taken over this year, Cam Humphrey. Uh, he's right from right down the road there and in, in, uh, went to Issaquah High School, um, began his career at Boise State, left there after a year to, to go to Saddleback Community College, and then transferred to Montana in 2018 and earned the starting job this year. So it's uh, working him into the offense. Um, it, it's, it'll be interesting to see what it looks like. He, he's had a couple starts five starts in the past due to some injuries and then playing in the spring, that's sort of a, an unknown is how he'll perform. And he's going to be without his uh, top two running backs who are going through some injury stuff right now, but they do have a really deep um, group of 
wide receivers um, for the FCS level, uh, led by an All-American guy and Sammy Akem, who came to Montana out of uh, out of Oklahoma, a uh, potential NFL player down the road, uh, big guy, 6'4", 215. Um, so they're really deep at wide receiver. And then offensive line, they, they, when Bobby Houck took over in 2018, they had three actual offensive linemen on their roster, guys who recru- were, were recruited to play offensive line, had to move some guys from the defensive side over. And now they've really built up that offensive line to be a be what they think could be a strength of the offense where they're eight guys deep on the line. They're a lot bigger. I think they're averaging around 315, 317 pounds among the guys they expect to play this year, but that'll be a challenge. It'll be interesting to see how they go up against Washington's defensive line. Cause I know they're, they got some big boys up there. Tell us a little bit about Cam Humphreys. What kind of quarterback is he? Um, well, He's, he, it seems like he's been in the past, he's been more of a, a pocket passer guy, um, distributing the ball around throughout the spring and throughout preseason camp this year. We've seen him run a little bit more. He's been more mobile. Some of them seem like designed runs. Some of them seem like scrambles. We haven't really seen that before. Um, you know, see if he can do that, how effectively he can do that in the game because the, the previous quarterback they had um, was more like what you think of a dual threat guy. Um, McCamp seems like he's more of a passer, but his, his uh, accuracy on, the, on deep balls was something where he's imp- it seems like he's improved a lot there, especially when you watch him every day at, at camp leading up to the season. So his, his accuracy just seemed to keep getting better and better and better every single day. And he's got about six wide receivers who they think they could roll in there at He's got a large group of guys to spread the ball around to. You mentioned that their first two running backs uh, are not going to play. Are they officially out? You know, tell me about the running back situation right now. Um, I know Bobby Houck said Marcus Knight is their starter. He's been out since before the spring season even started. Um, And there's some hope he'll come back at some point this year, but he, um, is not expected to play this week. He's uh, recovering from a from a knee injury. Um, and then their backup, uh, Nick Osmos, sophomore from Portland, he was injured pretty recently. Um, and Bobby said he was dealing with an ankle issue and was in a walking boot this week at practice. So it doesn't seem likely that he would play this week. So that sort of leaves them with two true freshmen who are listed on their depth chart to play. Both of them were in college last year, you know, so they're they're true freshmen because of the COVID year, everyone got back. Um, But the one who was at Montana got to play in both games in the spring, Xavier Harris, really elusive guy. Uh, Seems like he's added some weight to, you know, take some more hits while without, you know, getting beat up too quickly. And then the other one, Isaiah Childs was at Akron um, in the MAC, and he transferred in, just came in in early August to join the team. But he's, he had been their number three guy, um, but with these injuries, he's been practicing um, num- number two this week. You, you mentioned that they've been able to beef up their offensive line, and it sounds like they've got some size up there. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's, um, they've, they've sort of gone the transfer route um, to do that. So their center is a uh, A.J. Forbes transferred from Nebraska. Um, he wasn't playing much there, but um, their left guard, Hunter McGinnis, transferred in from Washington State just earlier this year. Um, they have a kid from a junior college, Moses Mallory is at right guard. And then maybe the, the most interesting story, at least, is their right tackle, uh, Dylan Cook. He's, he's from a town in Montana, Butte, and he was playing NAIA football as a quarterback. So if you could imagine trying to tackle a six foot four 
290 pound quarterback. It doesn't sound like fun, but <laughs> he decided to transfer and came to play on the offensive line here and has added on more, more weight. Um, so they're kind of heavy on transfers on, on the line. And then their left tackle's been um, their longest tenured guy on offense at any position. Um, he's played in 36 games. Conlon Beaver, the guy who came all the way over from Virginia um, quite a few years ago. And so, yeah, it's, it's a very veteran group and it just looks more physically imposing than anything they've had in the, the past three seasons under Bobby Houck. With the wide receivers, you touched on them earlier. Sounds like there's a couple of weapons for Cam Humphreys. Yeah, so like I mentioned, Sammy Akama, big, tall, rangy guy who can – he's deep, deep play threat is his, him. Um, then they got – it's their other two starters. I would, it looks like it would be Mitch Roberts, a, a junior from right in town in Missoula. Um, no, just great hands, catches everything that comes his way. Um, and then in the slot, Gabe Salser, a junior from, from in Montana, from Billings. Um, he's like a track sprint champion and Gatorade player of the year. And he had dealt with a lot of injuries over the years. Um, yeah, and finally seemed to, to get healthy and had some big games in the spring. So we'll see if he can uh, continue on with that. But they, they got a big hole to replace with uh, – they lost – to a transfer, Samari Torrey, their All-American wide receiver, left uh, last fall, transferred to Nebraska, and is starting there. So that they they could be even deeper at wide receiver if he had stayed, but now they're trying to to fill that spot where he was playing. On the other side of the ball, looking at the defensive line, it's hard not to gravitate towards the lack of size on the defensive line going against Washington, one of the biggest offensive lines they've ever had. Can you tell me a little bit about the size and there's obviously got to be some reason for concern there. Yeah, it'll be uh, even even by Big Sky standards, I'd say they're physically smaller than other Big Sky defensive lines weight wise. Um, but they try to make up for it with with the speed and the athleticism they have, which see how much that can work against Washington's line with so many all conference returners there um but yeah and then they, they'll bring their linebackers um, at least in the past they've brought them to blitz to bring that that extra pressure and it's, it's it might be it's a weird looking defense it's a it's a three three five defense and they've occasionally gone four two five so it's a variation of what bobby hauk learned from rocky long um, at San Diego State. So it, it'll be, at least the, the look of it will be a little unique, I would think, for Washington. It's not something other teams seem to see. So maybe it's not something they've seen or are expecting to see the rest of the year. But they'll, they'll rotate their two guys inside at defensive tackle. And then their defensive ends are both drop-down FBS guys. So Joe Babros was coming over from North Carolina State and Justin Belknap from University of Arizona. Uh, strength of the defense, on, is that the linebacking crew, would you say? Um, it could be. I think their defense is going to be much better than their offense, so there's a lot of strengths everywhere. Um, they're definitely deep at linebacker with their options, um, especially with the uh, Jace Lewis, All-American guy on the watch list for the FCS Defensive Player of the Year award. Uh, Patrick O'Connell, a guy who started at Division II, he's transferred up a few years back, earned a starting spot, was, I'd say, their, their most disruptive defensive player. He's a guy you might sometimes see coming off the edge to add the extra pressure. And then the third linebacker spot are some guys, you know, trying to earn a starting role where it could be one of them one week, one the next, and whoever's playing the best might get a lot more of those those opportunities going forward yeah, and the defensive secondary dylan morris i mean he's a young quarterback washington wants to run the football but my gut says they're going to come out throwing the football how comfortable are you with the secondary um that's why that's why i'm not sure what their, their strength will be yet we'll see in games because their their cornerbacks were 
and their defensive line were their weaknesses in the past. The defensive line, like we talked about, they shored that up a little bit. But the cornerbacks, they had been playing in Bobby Houck's last two seasons. They were playing with uh, wide receivers who were converted into cornerbacks who had never played cornerback before. So it was a, it was a big challenge for them. Um, but they, they've brought in two um, Oregon State transfers, Omar Hicks Onu, who I think he started about 30 games there for the Beavers. He's going to be starting at one spot. And they got a sophomore, Corbin Walker, a three-star recruit right out of Renton, Washington there. Looks like he's going to start. He's had a great spring and seems like he's been having a good camp. And then they brought in a Louisville transfer from Louisville, Justin Ford, and he's just such a hard hitter. He could navigate his way to the ball through traffic really easy and um, could be a guy you could see when they're if they bring someone in to, you know, need someone to tackle it with Washington running the ball so much, he uh, laying some big hits on guys. And then their, their safeties are a little more established. So um, Gavin Robertson's been their strong safety. This is going to be his third year starting. He began his career at Arizona before transferring to Montana here. Robbie Houck, um, the son of the head coach, has been a starter for – this will be his third year. Um, he's actually on pace to break the school's all-time tackle records. Um, and then they got a another kid, Nash Fouch, um, from right over there in, in Woodenville, Washington. Looks like he's going to be their third starter. And he had a good spring and a, and a good camp. So the safeties are almost all established. They're cornerback. There's a, a lot of more hype around them. We have to see how they perform in a game. And, you know, they got to be ready for Washington to take that shot at, at any time if they had been running the ball so much and then look to take a deep shot. Nothing makes you feel older than when you're covering a coach whose wife is having a child and then down the road you're covering as a team captain as an opponent. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Robbie Alk, I mean, how much is he like his dad and his uncle? Well, his uncle, Tim Houck, who played at Montana, his, his nickname was Hitter, um, just because the, the hits he would put on people. And that is exactly Robbie Houck. He plays, they list him as a safety. It, it's a little more, I don't know, safety linebacker hybrid type thing where he'll run down the alley. And I mean, he's always, I mean, he's not a, too big of a guy either. He's maybe 5'10, 185. Um, but he can put some some hard hits on people. Um, game comes down to it as a 40 yard field goal to tie or win the game. How comfortable are you with the place kicker at Montana? How comfortable are you with that 40 yard kick being lined up, Frank? <laughs> um, that they get to that point, uh, it'll it'll. I mean, my, if if they even get to that point, Montana better be ranked number one in the in the FCS poll the, the next week if they play Washington <laughs> that close. Um, well, the kicker is interesting because they, they only had freshmen on their roster. Um, and then during the second week of preseason camp, they ended up bringing in a transfer grad transfer from Arizona state, Kevin Macias. Um, and, and he's going to be their starting kicker to start the season at least. So he's got a powerful lag. It's looked like in camp and pretty decent accuracy. So, um, It'll, it'll be interesting, not just this game, but the whole season where kicker could be a, a bit of an adventure for Montana. All right. Are you looking forward to coming over, Frank? Have you been yeah. over here? Have you been, have you been to Husky I, Stadium yet? No, no, never. I've seen pictures. It looks gorgeous on the lake right there. So, I, yeah, really looking forward to, to seeing it. It looks beautiful in the pictures. Well, Frank, tell us uh, how we can read your stuff and uh, availability on Twitter and social media. Where can people see what you do? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Frank Agola, one word. Um, and you can read all my work at 406mtsports.com and at Missoulian.com. More questions, more demons, more evil. The series from creators Robert and Michelle King stars Katja Ebers, Mike Coulter, and Asif Manvi. Stream the new season of Evil now on Paramount+. Plus. Head to ParamountPlus.com slash evil to try it for free.